I'm going to read you a, a chapter from a novel that I'm just finishing, and it's the first novel I've ever written. Um, and the chapter I will read you is, um, is, has been commissioned by No Matter. Um, some of the other chapters also sort of answer different uh, social and cultural spaces and, and, and events, um, but not all of them. Um, the novel is called The Baudelaire Fractal. Uh, I thought that would definitely sell in airports, you know. If you're, <laughs> if you're a poet and you're going to write a novel, you just might as well. <laughs> Because I'm sure that all of you who are poets have received the question, very well-meaning when you tell people you're a poet, and they say, have you ever thought of writing a novel? Like they're helping you <laughs> get over this poetry. <laughs> so this, I'm not over the poetry thing. I just, uh, I had an idea, and then I... Surpri by surprise received a grant that gave me the money to take the time to execute the idea. So I rushed through this project and now I'm out of money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Coach House Press will publish it next winter. It is called The Baudelaire Fractal. I'm going to read, before I read the chapter, which I've written for um, No Matter, um, I'm going to read some um, a, a excerpts of earlier sections that will help sort of frame it and uh, give you a feeling for what the novel is doing. And I'll just, I'll start with the two epigraphs. I have insupportable nervous troubles, exactly like women. Baudelaire in a letter to his mother. <laughs> That's my translation, but it is what he said. <laughs> I've discovered Baudelaire was a woman, basically. In this domain, as in Sartor Resartus, it is the masked, the disguised, or the costumed which turns out to be the truth of the uncovered. Deleuze from Difference and Repetition. These things happened but not as described. Foreign. Raised from babydom into doubt, I'm as feminine as Rousseau. I, Hazel Brown, eldest daughter of a disappearing class, penniless neophyte stunned by the glamour of literature, tradeless, clueless, yet with considerable moral stamina and luck, left my family at 17 to seek a way to live. I was looking for beauty. Why should I not? I didn't exactly care about art. I simply wanted not to be bored and to experience grace. So I thought I would write. No other future seemed preferable. Let me be clear. I did not want to admire life. I did not want to skim it. I wanted to swim in it. I judged that to do this, I had to leave and to write. I wanted to speak the beautiful language of my time, but without pain. I myself was not beautiful, not in that way. Moody, angular, both dark and pale, of bad posture, for I was perpetually thrust forward as if rushing into time. Awkward whilst being observed, a half-broken tooth in my reluctant smile, uncertain in manners, premature frown lines between my gray-green eyes, all of this magnified by an urgency with no recognizable context. Comedic, in short, in the mode of a physical comedy. Prodigal, undisciplined, with an aptitude for melancholy, I left houses, cities, lovers, schools, hotels, and countries. I left with haste, or I left 
languidly. Also, I was asked to leave. <laughs> I left languages and jobs. Leaving made a velocity. I left garments, books, notebooks, and several good companions. Sometimes I left ideas. After the leaving, then what? I suppose I would drift. I had no particular plan. Cities exist. Hotels exist. Painting exists. Tailoring also, it exists as anger exists. Mascara exists. And melancholy and coffee. I liked sentences and I liked thread. Reading surely and excessively exists. Also convivially, perfume and punctuation. <laughs>